are a number of different techniques that can be used to show a photograph within type or graphics. In this example, I want to make use of both groups as well as clipping masks. So let's start here with this file. We can see that I have multiple layers. I've got the paper layer, I've got a circle layer, and I've got a type layer. And I want this tree bark to appear inside of the type as well as the circle. If, however, I toggle it on and then choose Layer Create Clipping Mask, you'll notice that it's only being clipped inside of the type layer. Let's go ahead and undo that, and instead I'm going to select both the type layer as well as the shape layer, and I'll put them into a group by selecting Layer and then Group Layers. Now that they're in a group, if I select the tree bark, I can then choose to create a clipping mask. And because both the type layer and the shape layer are within that group, the tree bark will be clipped to all of their contents. Now the great thing about doing it this way is if I select the Move tool and I have the tree bark selected, I can actually reposition that layer. I also have the flexibility of going down to the type layer and then editing that as well. Now one of the problems is that there's not a lot of separation between the items in the group and the background. There's a variety of different ways that we can change that. For instance, I could go to the paper layer and then decrease the opacity, or I could add a drop shadow to maybe the type layer as well as the circle layer. However, I don't want to add the drop shadow twice. So instead of adding it to the individual layers, I'll select the group and then use the effects icon to select Drop Shadow. You can see as I reposition the Drop Shadow, the Drop Shadow is not only on the type layer, but also on the circle because they're in the same group. Let's go ahead and just make that a little bit larger and maybe a little softer and click OK. So we can see that you have the flexibility by using layer groups to not only edit the individual layers, but also the photograph that's being grouped. Let's go ahead and turn off the type layer and show these other two graphic layers. You'll notice that the two fish don't have the drop shadow applied to them, but all I need to do is select them and put them within the group, and because the drop shadow is applied to the group, it is automatically applied now to those two graphics. If we move back up to the tree bark, we could move that around, but I actually want to soften it a little. You can see that the bark is a little bit harsh, so I'll choose Filter, and then oil paint, and let's zoom in here to 100%. You can see how now it's got this great texture that much more resembles maybe the fish scales than it did the bark. So I'll click OK, and we can see the results. If I zoom out and I have my Move tool selected, and don't forget, if we don't like where the tree bark is falling, not only can we reposition it, but we could also go into free transform and maybe transform the bark and then reposition it again. So you can see by working with layer groups as well as clipping masks in Photoshop, you have a lot of flexibility as far as isolating or displaying a photograph within those graphics.